Welcome. So what we've seen is that if we get our electricity from induction, oftentimes we have a lot of spinning, and our source of our voltage is going to be something like the voltage of the source function of time is equal to the maximum voltage times cosine of omega t. If we want to draw this, it would look something like this. So our AC circuits are going to have an alternating voltage, an alternating current, as we're later going to see, from a positive Vmax to a negative Vmax. This is why we call this AC circuits. But if we want to add a second voltage source, that has the same frequency but is not in phase with it, then looking at this and looking at the addition of this is really, really ugly. It really, really sucks. I hope that you trust me on this. Instead, what we can do is we can represent where in this angle we are in with an angle on a Cartesian plane. So for example, at this point, we are at zero degrees. If we're at zero degrees, we would draw zero degrees. If we are at this point, we are at 90 degrees. So we would draw 90 degrees. If we are down here, this is after 180, but before three, uh, before 360, in fact, even before 270, so maybe we'll say this is 225 degrees or something like that. This would be between 0, 90, and something this would be around 225 degrees. And we can do this for any arbitrary angle that we want. If we want to say look at 25 degrees, then we can do also 25 degrees. So what we can do is we can represent, write a sine graph by its sine graph, or we can represent a sine graph by just the angle that it subtends as it goes along a unit circle. So just a single representation of this diagram isn't super useful, but if we want to add two sine waves together, that have different phases, but the same frequency, we can think of having to add right, this amount plus this amount, this amount plus this amount, for all of this, and then we would then get some graph that would be a sum of these. But it's really tough. It sucks a lot to do it in this form. If instead we have this diagram, it becomes very, very easy that at any point I can represent just one of my graphs with blue. So I can say, right, this 25 degrees. And then I can look and see what this is doing. So this one's at zero degrees because it's there. And so then I have these two at these two different phases. And then these two add like vectors. So I can either take this one and put it here, or this one and put it here, or do write a rectangular rhomboid rule. But I would get that this vector here is the resultant of the two vectors. So I can find that the angle is going to be somewhere in between and all of that. So I can also do this for two different vectors that don't have the same magnitude. So I have one vector with a small magnitude and one vector with a significantly larger magnitude. I can still do 
vector addition rules. And then I would get the vector addition of these. So for our AC circuits, we're going to add phasers because all of our objects are going to have the same frequency, but they're going to have different phases. Luckily for us, most of the different phases are going to be 90 degrees apart, so it's going to be a lot easier than these examples, but we want to show what's going on with that. As we're doing that, we want to have some shorthand for AC circuits. I don't agree with this shorthand, so I'm going to try to write it out as much as possible. But whenever your book or whenever any other source talks about a lowercase v, what they actually mean is voltage as a function of time. If they ever use a lowercase i, they actually mean i of t, which is current as a function of time. If they use a capital V, and one of the big problems is, of course, right, how do you represent a capital V, unless you use a couple serifs or something like that, that means it's Vmax, which is the constant maximum V. And then capital I will represent Imax, the constant maximum current. What happens is that we're going to be using V of T, I of T, V max, and I max very, very much in this class, and much more if you take an engineering circuits class. So they just want to shorthand it to little v, little i, capital V, capital I. We don't see it too often, so we want to show it what's going on. So one example of the phasers that we can do is we can also show comparative current i of t and v of t. So let's take a look at a trivial-ish example of a AC source. We're going to represent an AC source as a little sine wave inside of a circle and a resistor R. So with our loop rule, we have that the voltage of our source as a function of time minus R times the current over our resistor as a function of time is equal to zero. So we have I sub R as a function of time is equal to V of our source as a function of time over R, or that we can say that our right voltage of our resistor as a function of time is equal to R times our current as a function of time. Normally we do I R, but since it's a function of time, we kind of do it uh, after. So in this case then, we have that our voltage of our source is cosine omega t, so this is going to be Vmax cosine omega t over R, and this is just going to be Vmax cosine omega t. What makes this all trivial is that we don't have any difference in phase for this. We will for other elements, I promise. But the first example is always the easiest and sometimes too trivially easy, is that our current and our voltage for resistors are in phase. So we have I and V are in phase for resistors. And we can draw this by drawing our current at any angle that we want. So very often we do an angle between 0 and 90, maybe kind of a 30 or 45 degrees very often. And we can label this as the vector I max. So the vector I max is a constant value. It just changes in where what angle it is. And then our voltage is on a different scale. It can be larger or smaller. So we can put a smaller vector here of capital Vmax. 
If you're looking in other books, they will just do capital I and capital V. If you're comfortable with that, awesome, but we're just learning it, so we're going to right, try to use the notation as much as possible. So for our resistors, we would draw the two in phase by drawing them, the two vectors going in the same direction. And in further videos, we'll see what happens when the two vectors are not in phase. But this is a very good example of showing why they're in phase instead of having to draw graphs like this. And just as a reminder for future videos, right, our phasers are going to add as vectors.